Fantasy season is here. Make sure you are prepared at ultimatedraftkit.com. And on today's show, we get into the nitty-gritty with the quarterbacks. The top 10, that's out of the way. That's the easy stuff. 11 through 20 and a little bit beyond. This is where the real discussions are happening. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, and enjoy the show. Summer is a time for excitement, so go ahead and switch things up with a new recipe from HelloFresh. With pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions, it's never been easier to try something new. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. Foot Clan, there are hundreds of companies out there claiming to compare auto and home insurance rates, but there's only one that does it right. Get a better insurance with Gabby. Gabby is the one true comparison platform with fast, verifiable quotes, not ballpark guesses. Get that crap out of here. Use your current policy to find a better one, comparing your current coverage with 40 of the top insurance providers like Progressive, Nationwide, Travelers, all in one place. I jumped on there. I, ra I ran the test. Andy, you yeah, ran Yeah, I did it too. It's super easy. Just plug in, in your information and it's boom. A I call it a cakewalk. Yes, and, and right there they show you, hey, we're going to save you money. And Gabby customers save $961 per year on average. They're not going to sell your info, no annoying spam or robocalls. Put your policy to the test like I did. Get a better insurance with Gabby. It's totally free to check. There's no obligation. Go to Gabby.com slash footballers. That's G-A-B-I dot com slash footballers. Gabby.com slash footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday, August 16th, the Fantasy Footballers back with you, fresh off of preseason week one. Oh, that was, that was, uh, that was really a, an exciting week of preseason football. Preseason week one is usually just all your hyped football's back. You get just, you get a couple crumbs here and there of, of actual stars, but there was a lot of juicy information. Well, that's because right now a lot of the stars are technically backups, so they're allowed right. to play in week one. It's great. We didn't have a preseason last year. Correct. So we haven't reacted to preseason week one in two years. Also a fair point. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. You can follow Mike at FF Hitman on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Decent follow over there uh, that's what the people are saying jason is jason uh at jason ffl i'm at great Andy Holloway. follow is what the people are saying right right, right yeah <laughs> it's a lot of feedback on following you um, check his timeline it's just what an incredible follow sometimes he is irresponsible with his twitter account and mm -hmm. leaves scathing aj green related jokes on my tweets yeah that's usually what i'm good for <laughs> um but we have a great show today NFL news to talk about, some preseason week one reaction, hopefully appropriate reaction. Quarterback rankings part two on the show today. So let's just kick that off with the quick question. What are your biggest takeaways from preseason week one without losing our minds? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I guess I had two. Um, my, my big overarching, uh, thought from week one was that I thought all the rookie quarterbacks looked like, looked what you hope they look like. I'm sure. not, I'm not overreacting and saying, oh, they're Justin Fields and Trey Lance, that pass is going to be the greatest, but it was really nice to see. I thought Justin Lawrence, uh, Trevor Lawrence? Trevor Lawrence. I always call him Justin Lawrence. <laughs> I think Trevor Lawrence looked good. Justin but I was... Lawrence is a is an actor from the eighties. Oh, fantastic. he was on a. Was that nine hundred two one zero? Something like that. Um, you know, Whoa! I, so he looked good. I thought Justin Fields looked good. Obviously, the pass heard around the world from Trey Lance was, mm -hmm. despite his full game stat line not being um, what you would say good. Uh, and then four drops. But my my you know of of all four, Zach Wilson. He actually looked – he had he some did. zip on the ball. And um, outside of one bad pass, I, I was pleasantly pleasantly surprised by the rookies this, this week. Mike? 
Yeah, the uh, the quarterbacks was the big takeaway. Oh, we were thinking Joey Lawrence from Blossom. Yeah, that's, that's – come on, people, keep up. Uh, uh, the, the biggest takeaway was the rookie quarterbacks looking good, looking like they will have their time. But as far as actionable fantasy football, we had to go update the rankings. It was Jason's ice player from whatever, a week or two ago, Miles Gaskin, running back from the Miami Dolphins, uh, hopeful, presumed starter. Uh, no, he, he was not the starter. It was, in fact, Malcolm Brown who got the vast majority of snaps. And then you have uh, Brian Flores coming out today saying it's going to be a three-headed monster at the running back position. And, and it, if if you were spending that fourth, fifth round pick on Miles Gaskin, it looks like that's going to feel really, really bad uh, in about three weeks. As as the the baller here who could victory lap this, yes. um, I, I don't expect Malcolm Brown to be the starter. Gaskin will be the starter. He'll get the majority of the work. But I think that what you saw is what, what came out today is it's not going to be what it was last year where all of the work was – to him when he was out there on the field he had a really large market share of the running back room um and i think there will be more involvement uh, malcolm brown and and, uh, and, and ahmed. ahmed will be involved on a normal sunday and for Gaskin's especially in the red zone for malcolm brown that's yeah. the yes. biggest concern i had coming into the year was you know they, they beat writers in miami said don't overreact they said you know last preseason it was all jordan howard it was all uh, non gaskin running backs and you didn't want to overreact to it they still expect him to be get the majority of the work like Jason said but he has to get the work that he received last year to really pay off being a fifth round pick yeah that, there that's was the problem and we saw um a couple other takeaways no one really separated themselves in New Orleans at the quarterback position both players threw interceptions mm -hmm. um Sean Payton wasn't going to come out and say somebody's leading that Drew Locke Looked pretty darn yeah, good. Yeah, uh, I switched. I I had Teddy Bridgewater down as um, my quarterback for the season, and I did make the switch because talk out of camp is that Drew Locke has been, you know, getting the first first team reps, and then you saw it, right? He came out week one. He was the first guy out, and he didn't do anything to, to say. Uh, here's the thing. Teddy Bridgewater can't win the job, right? Drew Locke. Yes, correct. They want Drew Locke to be the guy, and Drew Locke can easily give the job to Teddy. But he hasn't so far, so I, I I think it is Drew Locke's job to lose now. And if he if Drew Locke has anything of a average performance in week two, it's done. He'll be the starter. All right, let's uh, jump into the news. Before we do that, I want to remind you, the time is now. So if you need to get ready for your draft, head over to ultimatedraftkit.com. That's where you'll find our tier based rankings, the hundred plus player profile videos, all our sleepers, breakouts, bus picks consistency charts, the draft analyzer, everything you need to dominate your draft is at ultimatedraftkit.com. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. Dak is back. Yeah. Expected to practice on a limited basis today. Saw him throwing the football a little bit before the Cardinals Cowboys preseason game. So we'll see. The MRIs have revealed things healing appropriately right now. So optimism, mm -hmm. perhaps. Uh, Curtis Samuel has returned from the PUP. Yeah, baby! Let's go! Oh, man, the, the audience loves it. Yeah. Uh, I'm very excited about this, but uh, I don't want to overreact because he's done nothing. All right. I just, you know, put on a thunderous applause right. for him. That's it. That's it. Showing up. Come on, Curtis. Johnny Smith suffered a low ankle sprain. Hey. He's had a lot of ankle sprains. Yeah. And then Henry, Hunter Henry, I almost called him Henry Hunter. Hunter. Which you can you can reverse it if you want. Now, does he get the H back now that he is no longer playing with uh, Justin Herbert? He gets the H back when he's healthy. Oh, so right okay. now he's he's healthy right now? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, limited at practice. Elijah Moore day-to-day -day with a quad injury. Anthony Miller, slight dislocation of the right shoulder. This one's From, sad yeah. to me. I don't. I, yeah. I, he's had multiple. He's on the Texans now, by the way. Right. Yes. Uh, he's had multiple shoulder surgeries, and I remember. I think it was only two years ago where he looked so promising, mm -hmm. and then the shoulder injuries got in the way, and now Darnell Mooney said goodbye, 
And now his shoulder said, see you later. Yeah. Uh, Kadarius Tony aggravated an injury, did not play in the preseason game. So he's been banged up throughout camp. Well, he was on – I think he was on the COVID list, right, to start. I mean, this is this is a disastrous start for Mike, Kadarius Tony. You should share what you said on our company <laughs> Slack because I, I think it's delightful. <laughs> so, uh, so that came in, and I just said, hey, guys, have you ever wanted to drop a first-round wide receiver from your dynasty team before he's ever taken a snap? <laughs> it's a unique situation here with Kadarius. <laughs> and I knew when well, I – Well, you've never been the biggest fan. I know. No one was. I knew when, when I drafted when him. When you wrote this, I was shocked you had drafted. I was like, wait a minute. How did Mike do that? It was the back of the second round in the rookie draft, and it was – You had talked his value down so much, he's, he's sitting there in the back of the second round. Yeah, and I said, he's still a first-round wide receiver. Let me punch myself in the face. You know what? John Ross got me too. <laughs> we buried the uh, the real preseason takeaway that I – am choosing oh. to lean into, which was that horrific Daniel Jones interception. Oh. Did you get to see that, Mike? Yes. There wasn't a wide receiver on his side of the ball within 30 yards there was of where he threw it. Miscommunication. That was called closing your eyes and throwing. Oh, well, to be fair, he didn't have Kadarius Tony, so mm. that it'll right, all yes. be fixed okay. soon. Maybe he had thought he was there. Uh, he is smaller. He probably thought he was hiding back behind the linebackers. All right, that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper, the largest dynasty platform. Just turned our family uh, Sleeper League back on today. Our draft, we're doing a slow draft, and it starts on Friday. Oh, very excited. So uh, I, Mike got the first pick while Mike and his son. Yes. And um, very curious what you do with that number one pick, Mike. Lots well, of options. Well, if, if my son has his way, it'll be some random player. <laughs> I'd go A.J. Green at 101. <laughs> no, he won't do that, thankfully. Okay. Smart boy. Yeah. Yeah, smart boy. <laughs> Quarterbacks. All right, this is a fun show. We get to do the second ranking show for the quarterback position. Covered 1 through 10 on Friday's episode. Kyler Murray, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. Russell Wilson, Dak Prescott, Justin Herbert, Ryan Tannehill. That was our top 10. You can go back and listen to all of our discussions and analysis on Friday's episode. These quarterbacks are extremely important today because while, while we did bring up Ryan Tannehill, Tom Brady, guys that we are often drafting because they do slip a little bit later, look, uh, in certain drafts, if the target or two you're after uh, is taken before you uh, select them, we are, as a show, usually a late-round quarterback drafting uh, entity, in which case these are the quarterbacks you need to know this you know, this year. Who is it that is in that – you know, every year there's, there's so many great quarterbacks. There were 38 quarterbacks that had a top-12 performance this last year, and the guys we're talking about today, many of them will be undrafted and can be great for fantasy. And this week we have not just our My Guys episode, but we have our Tips and Tricks episode where we're trying to give you some advice, some things that you can do, some intangibles um, that can impact your season. Late round quarterbacks, that's one of those pieces. Uh, and one of the things you should pay attention to when looking at them is that opening schedule to the year. You don't want to draft a quarterback late that, you look, that you're looking to stream and then they have a brutal opening three weeks and then you're like, well, the guys had them on their streaming quarterback list. Um, just be willing to pivot to move between these guys. Yeah, 38 of them finished within the top 12, but not a lot of those 38 you could lock into your lineup each and every week. So, um, you know, during the season, we have our uh, quarterback streaming segment every Tuesday where we're picking out that week's matchups and the quarterbacks we like from the waiver wire. Exactly. And this, last year on this specific episode, the three names that we brought up uh, that were big time contributors to championship teams were Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers and Ryan and Tannehill, whose ADP was all three of those guys were outside the top 10. So let's look at number 11 here. Kick it off with Jalen Hurts, quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. I have him at 13, Jason at 10, Mike at nine. I am not in any way naive to the upside of Jalen Hurts because he runs the football and runs it well. Uh, my concerns around Jalen Hurts 
are all in the periphery, the wide receiving room, um, the weapons that he has, not enough sample size last year to know how defenses are going to play him. So I just think it could be an up and down struggle. There were a lot of people excited about Gardner last year, but I was worried about Jacksonville, not Gardner. I have the same concerns about Philadelphia this year, not about Jalen, the player. Yeah, I mean, the the reality is you're 100% right. The Eagles don't look like they're going to be great, and his receiving core is really not good right now. It hinges De on. Yeah, De unless Devontae Smith comes back and is dominant in his rookie year, um, which I think there's, there's reason for hope that that is true, but if that hope does not come to fruition, then this is an objectively poor receiving core. The nice thing, though, is that he runs the ball, and, you know, if, if you were to throw the, you know, for 200 yards, which is putrid, but you're adding 50 rushing yards on the ground, that's like Tom Brady throwing for 330 yards. It's it's fine. It's great for fantasy. That's the same exact score, and he is one of the few guys that could actually legitimately rush for 1,000 yards. I mean, on his four-game pace, he was on pace for 1,100 yards. Obviously, it's a super small sample, but the uh, the level of rushing ability here is, you know, Josh Allen's thought of as a rushing quarterback. You're talking about double the rushing yardage of Josh Allen with someone like Jalen Hurts. Let me ask you this then. If Devontae Smith, who's recovering from injury, isn't available to start the year, is this a pick that you could regret? Because he, you don't have a full ensemble of weapons. You start the year on the road, then you play San Francisco. Like, is there a chance that you don't even want to put him out there the first couple of weeks because he doesn't have the upside you'd hope for? Possibly week two. <clears throat> Excuse me, but week one is Atlanta. So I, I, it's on the road. Sure, not where I want a a tier a quarterback in this tier starting the season, but it's Atlanta. The, the, the defense is bad. Then San Francisco, that could be a rough matchup. And then it's Dallas. I mean, the, so two of those first three weeks are sensational starts for, for Jalen Hurts. And, and Jason is correct here of if he runs for – if he runs for 900 yards, which should be well within the a reasonable projection for Jalen Hurts, who had over 350 rushing yards in four starts last year, if he hits that 900 mark, He'll be a top 12 quarterback by the end of the year. I think teams are going to force him to throw the football. I think that's going to be the equation for this season. Possible. I think. I mean, last last year, to, in that sample size that we're talking about with that nice 68-yard rushing baseline, he had the worst adjusted completion percentage in the NFL. Right. And, and, but I'm sure that teams are thinking, we're going to force Lamar Jackson to run. To and, throw. Or to throw. And it. there's just some guys who are, are – you can't necessarily lock that game plan in. Jalen Hurts is is a very is a very athletic guy. He's not Lamar, but he runs very well. All right, so at twelve we have what the Saints quarterback? Yes, yeah. I mean, we're, right now, it's, if you're looking at the rankings, sometimes people uh, rightly get confused when they look at our rankings. They're like, w you don't have Jameis Winston, you know, Jameis Winston's quarterback thirty or whatever. Really, where we have Taysom Hill, and th and they would be different slightly different um but Taysom Hill is who we have decided to stack because we don't want to have two quarterbacks to be you know up here at 12 pushing some other quarterback down a spot when the reality is both of them can't finish as the quarterback you know 12 ish right. um so right now we have it as Taysom he has been the guy that started last season um when uh, obviously when Drew Brees went down he got the first start in preseason week one. So right now he's the guy. Whispers from the bushes are that it might be Jameis Winston. And, yeah, we and we still don't know. Yeah, it's just un unknown. Um, so we really should d discuss both. I've statted both out, and it's been surprising how close together because it's totally different how their stats come, but they're very similar to each other in fantasy uh, when I've done that. This might be your sneakiest quarterback pickup possible this offseason because everybody's mock drafting everybody's going through the motions everybody's looking at the rankings and nobody knows who the quarterback is in new orleans and yet that represents a top 12 option i mean if it's Taysom, he was the quarterback 411 8 and 11 last year in his four starts 
If it's Jameis, then you know he's going to throw the football a lot and he has fantasy upside even if he throws interceptions. So there's a chance that you end up with these two guys being completely ignored in your draft. Mm -hmm. Even because, it, let's say they declare one the quarterback, isn't there still going to be question marks around a transition? I mean, you're not going to, okay, Jameis, you're the starter, and he throws nine picks in the first three weeks. Probably going to see a change at the quarterback spot. Yeah, possible. And it, if it is declared that it's Jameis, you're going to have some people, well, how how are they going to use Taysom? Are they still going to rotate him in every once in a while? Are they going to you know, have him? You know, uh, do a platoon here of two quarterbacks, which could drive down the the ADP of Jameis, even if he is named the starter. I like both of these guys for fantasy purposes. If regardless of who is named the starter, I agree that there is there is value to be had. You have no idea who it is right now, and grabbing it, it's like, let's say you you even if if you're drafting right now in your you're drafting early, which I'm talking to some people, they've. Due to scheduling, they've had to do their actual drafts already. If you're drafting both Taysom and Jameis as your final two positional picks, I'm actually okay with that. And Find out who the starter is, and then before week one, drop the other quarterback and pick up a waiver player. I am more excited about Taysom's security because of the same reasons you just made for Jalen Hurts. I mean, he's going to run the football. He's going to yeah. run it into the end zone. If Jameis is the quarterback and you don't have Michael Thomas and you don't have Traquan Smith or he's hobbled and you don't know what Troutman's going to bring to the table, yeah, like Marquez Callaway. Yeah, I mean, Mark, he looks nice. that, that's an argument for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think Callaway should be, you know, one of those guys that you're taking a shot on late in drafts, but you're 100. I mean, yes, if that is who could lead this team right now for the first half of the year in targets and receptions, that is. That's a scary proposition. We talked a lot of trash about the receiving options for the Eagles, and they're better. I mean, that's that's a better receiving core over there with Goddard and yeah. Ertz and yeah. Rager and Devontae Smith than, than this core is right now. Um, I was sharing with Mike, and, and Andy, I'm curious your thought, because he did not think that there was really a chance. But I started questioning, is there just a chance that the Saints are – are not good this year. I mean, their, their offense could really fall apart here pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, I think they could end up a 500 team. It, it, they were good last year uh, with with a limited Drew Brees. They have a great defense. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they could end up they could end up ping ponging between quarterbacks and you know one major injury. I don't know how you win the win a game without Alvin Kamara. So right. if he if he was to leave, like they've had multiple weapons before where you could lose one for a little while, but without Alvin Kamara, I don't know how they score enough points. So um Yeah, very, very shallow roster. Uh but if Taysom is the start of that rushing baseline, more will comfortable. be great. Yeah. All right, before we get to Kirk Cousins, our next quarterback on the list, I want to thank today's sponsors. IP Vanish is a great way to protect yourself online. If you ever feel like you're being followed around on the internet, people snooping into your business, probably, I was going to say, probably is happening. Well, longtime sponsor IP Vanish is a VPN, a virtual private network here to take back your privacy and your control. It is very, very easy to install, to use. You can put it on your computers, your tablets, your phones, even things like your Fire Stick when you're streaming media and protect yourself. If you're going on public Wi-Fi's, which you have to do more and more common, you know, the, maybe the menu at the restaurant is uh, on a QR code. Well, you want to log on to their Wi-Fi. You want to protect yourself. And right now for listeners of the show, they're giving an incredible 65% off their annual plan, which is equal to six months free. So go to IPVanish.com slash footballers to claim your 65% savings. The annual plan is just $44.99 for the first year with our exclusive discount. And... This is the time to sign up with our discount and their current promotion. You can get a VPN for 65% off their usual offering. IP Vanish, best of the best, even rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot, and that's with more than 6,000 reviews. Remember, it's IPVanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself today. We also want to thank FanDuel for supporting the podcast and the show. New FanDuel players, listen up. Your day is about to get 20% better. How's that? Well, you start by playing, you know, you're playing fantasy football this season and FanDuel is going to give you 
a 20% bonus. Oh, that makes sense. That sounds like 120% better because fantasy football is <laughs> great. That's true. If you start at 100, now it's at 120. Now they're giving you a 20% bonus on your first deposit. That's up to five hundred free dollars on FanDuel. Uh, that's what we call a BTB. That's a big time bonus. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. And all you need to do to claim it is make your first deposit on FanDuel. You know the story. Look, you set new lineups every single day. They've got tons of different game formats: main slate, single game, best ball, snake draft. Uh, you can even play private contests with your friends. Get a little group together. Uh, experience season long wins. Without the season-long waits, sign up today at FanDuel.com slash FFF to claim your bonus and start playing today. That's FanDuel.com slash FFF. Age and local restrictions apply. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable site credit that expires after 30 days. Captain Kirk time. Kirk Cousins. Tried and true. Mm-hmm. Average. Yeah. <laughs> Set your phasers to all right. I mean, that's true. And and when I when I'm trying to picture other quarterbacks in the category of Kirk Cousins, it, I I think when Kirk looks into the mirror, he sees Matt Ryan. And when Matt Ryan looks into the re, the mirror, he sees Kirk Cousins, where these guys are reliable. Probably in the same category as Matthew Stafford when he was with Detroit. Really just you know you're going to get a an above average but not not elite quarterback performance most weeks above average game manager yeah yeah i mean there are there are quarterbacks with tremendous risk week to week maybe you have a really strong team jam packed with powerhouse wide receivers powerhouse running backs kirk cousins is going to get you through the week and he's not going to hurt you um but the question on this show is is he going to help you enough no he's a now, Jason, yes. he's a late 12th round draft pick. Yeah. He passed for 4,200 yards. He had 35 touchdowns and just 13 interceptions. He has a player that could finish at one overall at the wide receiver spot. Like, it's not impossible for Justin Jefferson to do that. He was the quarterback 11 last year. He's being drafted as the quarterback 18. He had as many boom games as Deshaun Watson or Lamar Jackson combined. Now, what is the Now, why do you get to just discount all that because you think their defense is going to be a little bit better? Uh, right. that That's not the entire reason. I mean, when, when I look at, uh, you know, his track record, you, you're right. He had a phenomenal year last year. Uh, that was the best he's been in several years. His passing touchdown rate was uh, through the roof for him. I mean, career-wise – you're talking about a guy who's always been under 5%, pretty league average uh, around that 4.9. And now last season, uh, he comes out and throws what 35 was? and 13, 6.8%. 6 yeah, 6.8% passing touchdown rate. Um, and I've brought this up before. Obviously, they had to stay to try to try to get back in some games when they were giving up 35, 40, 50 points. Um, and I don't see that happening this year with the Mike Zimmer defense. But I, I would argue that some of his um, ability to have those big boom games, while they happened to happen a few times last year, that it's it's really not his norm. He's Philip Rivers of old where he'll finish the, uh, the season at maybe quarterback 11, quarterback 12. But through the year, it wasn't anybody that was really helping you. He just was – when he is bad, you know, he's the quarterback 17. And you know what I mean? Like, he doesn't fall to quarterback 38 and implode and have some five turnover game that really drags him down. And so I think at the end of the year, his ranking will be fine, but he's not a quarterback that's going to help you win games in fantasy. And I just don't want it to be um, – I, I, I would wrong. rather swing for the fences. No. I think you're wrong. Because I, I, the history of Kirk Cousins does not include Justin Jefferson, who might be the most – explosive wide receiver in the game. It so we included when, Stephon, Stephon Diggs, Diggs who it is did. awesome, it, and a younger Adam Thielen. Would you not correlate? So last year's QB 11 performance would have been the QB 5 in 20, uh, 2019. We've talked about the quarterback scoring going through the roof. Like This was the lowest fantasy finish ever for a 35-plus passing touchdown season. So this was an elite season from Kirk Cousins is what I want to get at. 
I correlate that to Justin Jefferson. I correlate that to, like, you look at the metrics for Jefferson, he's the best down the field that the NFL has right now. So I do think that there's the possibility that you're, you saw a different precedent set for a player that has three top 10 finishes in his history that was quarterback 13 in a year when they had a great defense. So, Mike, help us out. Uh I'm kind of I'm, no, I'm in between. I, I think he's, I mean, you are in between stats wise too. I'm at 11, Jason at 19, Mike. You have him at 13. Yeah, he's what what I've been saying is he's he's the perfect quarterback too. Now, if you let's say things go really sideways in your draft because you're waiting on a quarterback and then some kind of run happens at the end that you weren't projecting, you can start the season with Kirk Cousins, uh, Cincinnati, Arizona, Seattle. Those are three solid matchups, at least based off of uh, of what happened last year with with quarterbacks against these those teams. So uh, you you could start with them. I would be searching for, you know, hopefully you have someone with a higher ceiling because Kirk Cousins will be okay, but Kirk Cousins is not jumping in like he's not jumping into the top five. I don't think that's in the range of outcomes for him. Maybe I'm just more sad that this next guy, Matt Ryan, is ranked higher than Kirk Cousins, where Cousins outperformed him last year. Matt Ryan the, lost the powerhouse of Julio Jones from his repertoire, and you have him three spots higher. Well, they're they're very close in rankings, and they're very close in style and my desire to play them in fantasy. I'm not really all aboard Matt Ryan either. I mean, these are two guys that are going to – throw for enough yards at least with Matt Ryan you know their defense is going to suck and he's going to have to play catch up uh, obviously he added Kyle Pitts but I you know I, I do think Matt Ryan is worse this year from Julio to Pitts uh, than he was last year and uh, you're right Kirk Cousins outproduced him last year I, I just think Kirk Cousins is going to have normal touchdown regression come and and, and the yardage come back down to a reasonable okay. base but both of these players I mean this is like they're not late round targets for you. Neither they are, guy are late round quarterback targets. Right. They are not really my late round quarterback targets. Um I I just think they're going to finish plenty of weeks as the quarterback eight or nine or ten throughout the year and finish with a good ranking, but not really have the upside I'm looking for. Probably gonna get a hundred more pass attempts from Matt Ryan as well. Yes, you will. So um Kyle Pitts, Calvin Ridley, Russell Gage and company. You don't have Dalvin Cook siphoning you know the amount of offense away from Matt Ryan either if you want to make an argument for Matty, Matty Ice. Um, he opens up the season against Philadelphia, so that's that's also a solid week one target. Okay. And then he has the Giants uh, in week three as and, well. I mean, and poor Matt Ryan, he's he only has the three seasons over 30 passing touchdowns. I mean, he's an absolute yardage monster. And this guy – what Atlanta is, has done to Matt Ryan with a new offensive coordinator, I, averaging like every two years, he has to do a brand new system. It's it's ridiculous. So let's get some continuity here for Matt Ryan. Uh, it's a little little late. I know it's a little. <laughs> I, don't, late. I, I don't think it's coming for him at this point in his career. Probably not. Matthew Stafford at fifteen. Uh, Jason, you're the highest on on Matthew Stafford. Is he an actual late round target for you? He is a late round target for me. I don't think that his uh, week one matchup is as good as the other two guys, but at least Chicago. Here, at least here, I see a path for the potential. Like when I draft one of these late round quarterbacks, I want the idea that oh man, they have a path to be like a top six quarterback this year. Um, and when I think about, let, let me know, guys, if you have this thought ever, okay? Because I have this thought almost every year in hindsight. I say. There are these storylines. Ice cream for breakfast. Just right. It's okay, right? Nice. Ice cream for breakfast is okay. Yeah. Stop getting shamed. But yeah. at the end of every year, I look back and I think there are certain storylines that seem now in hindsight so obvious. Like we should have all seen it coming. Sure. And we didn't. No one saw it. No, like no one in the world, and it just came out of nowhere, and we could have seen it coming. This is one of those storylines where I just wonder. Like, look, Matthew Stafford plus Sean McVay, is this something where he really does just explode and the and the offense for the for the Rams is 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 great because you've got a really smart, capable, um, quality quarterback with a really smart, capable offensive coordinator, good weapons, 
<clears throat> and I don't have him statted as anything otherworldly, but at least I see that potential and say, yeah, is this a storyline we're all missing because we haven't seen him play for this team before? So it's yeah, there's there's some hope and some upside that maybe he comes out and scorches the earth. Um, he has been ridiculously injury prone of late. I think that's the real yeah. fear for Matthew Stafford. He he missed a lot of time, thumb and ribs and ankle and back then, and then back and then thumb again this preseason. Just like it wasn't serious, but we all winced a little bit uh, more than we would have with somebody else that dealt with that injury. So I think that stands out a little bit. But I love Matthew Stafford, the player. I love the elite traits he brings to the position that, that Jared Goff certainly didn't possess. You've brought them up many times, Jason, the improvisation, the, the, the difficult window throws and, and arm angles and all of these things that they just didn't have. He can go win you a game. Now they have one of the best defenses in football. Mm -hmm. So how much is Sean McVay's intelligence going to be channeled into game management, right? Don't make mistake. Uh, type of Matthew Stafford might be what you need three out of four weeks. That's the big, another question mark. Yeah. I mean, that's, that is one of the reasons that he moved up for me this off season when they lost cam Akers uh, and Daryl Henderson being their main guy. I think that they're going to need to step on the throat and really outscore people as opposed to say, let's control this game a little bit easier and, uh, you know, give 25 carries to a running back while we've got a lead. I don't think Henderson would, would be able to do that, but um, your point is definitely fair on a great defense. They're not going to need to score 45 points to win the game. Um, but it's just one of those things where with Cooper Cup and Robert Woods and uh, Tyler Higby, uh, Henderson's a good pass catcher. I, I could see – remember, it wasn't that long ago, two, the season before last, um, he was – Matthew Stafford was on fire, and then obviously he missed – The 2019? Yeah, and then he missed half of that year, but he was a top-five quarterback that we were all in love with. Do you realize that Matthew Stafford has thrown for more than 30 touchdowns two times? Yeah, he had a 40-plus, right, with Calvin? Yeah, yes, the the 40 in 2011, that was the year he went absolutely nuts. I mean, he also threw the ball 663 <laughs> times that year the 5041 touchdowns but that's wild to me because when you, you think of Matthew Stafford you know at the beginning you think of the gunslinger Cal he's Calvin Johnson's already in the Hall of Fame I mean that's that's who he was playing with that level of talent and yet it, we give Matt Ryan crap for the touchdown totals only being over 33 well, times Stafford's only twice the Detroit Lions are the Adam Gaze of teams in the NFL there is a there is a a suppression effect that happens in Detroit. <laughs> okay, well, that's that's some strange analysis. There's just like an invisible dome covering the city. Yeah, there is. There's kind of like a fog. Look, I don't want to. I already have, but I don't <laughs> want to disrespect the Detroit fans. But look, you know what I'm talking about. No offense. I know. No, I said no offense. <laughs> look, you. It's just appropriate levels of 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 you know what do we say about the. Uh, the head coach is there. There hasn't been a head coach of the Lions that has gotten rehired. Right. At, ever. Like, like in, ever. Yeah. Or in the last, like, 10 coaches or something like that. Um, there is a uh, – <laughs> Brooks Brooks is, is, is messaging me right now. He says, Andy's right. You can feel it when you live nearby. There's a fog of defeat that settles over the field. And, and so – it's still a well-received point. He hasn't hit that total. You've seen sample sizes, right? Like the year he got hurt two years ago, those first eight games he was on pace for like 50 touchdowns. Yeah, but that was it. I mean. No, I know. He's. Uh, that's why he's being that's drafted. That's wild. That's why he's being drafted, at, uh, you know, later or without that potential promise. I, I think that Stafford will do more game managing for I the do Rams. Too. I do, too. Uh, Joe Burrow at 16, I don't want to draft him. He's completely off my board. Oh, man, He's Joe going Burrow. in the ninth round of fantasy drafts. He's my 20th ranked quarterback. I have no interest in this experiment because I don't think the upside is there compared to everybody else that I could be taking. So I'd be taking Trevor Lawrence ahead of him. I'd take the shot there versus Joe Burrow. Um, I know he has weapons all over the field, but I don't. ACL, MCL, PCL. Too many yeah. abbreviations for me to take the shot this year. It's so brutal, that injury. 
moving the the hopes and the dreams, at least for the the beginning of this season, for Joe Burrow, moving them way down. Elite weapons all over. They just added a top five pick at the wide receiver position in Jamar Chase, and you know that the volume will be there. Like the Bengals are going to throw the ball. Uh, they're going to be near the the league lead by the end of the year in, in terms of passing attempts, but that you combine all those things, recovering from the injury, they're opening against Minnesota, Chicago, and Pittsburgh. So if you're in, my advice if you're in on Joe Burrow is you wait. You don't draft him. Uh, it, maybe maybe he's great at the beginning and then you miss out. Sorry, but the way that I'm handling Joe Burrow is I'm looking to pick him up after that Pittsburgh game. Because he gets Jacksonville in week four, see if there's any real signs of life, see if he, he's showing the the promise of two years ago being the overall number one pick. See if any of that is there. If there's signs of life, then pick him up and move on from there. I don't want to play Pittsburgh and Baltimore and, and Cleveland twice. Yeah, I mean, you're going to need to do that every single year that he's yeah. a Bengal. It's just a question of whether he can step forward this year. I believe that he can, but I don't think it's going to happen in the beginning of the year. So I'm... I'm with Mike, and I'm with you, Andy. He's off my draft board. He's just he's going in single digit rounds, uh, as you know, the quarterback thirteen right now. He's my quarterback sixteen. But if I had to break down first half of the year versus second half of the year, he'd probably be near my quarterback twenty two, twenty three for that first half of the season. Yeah. So he's a guy I'm looking for waivers, maybe a cheap trade later, and not even a cheap trade waivers. He's going to get cut at some point. It's also going to give you a chance to see if this offensive line is better than it was last year because. You know, there's some optimism and some hope, but just imagine the way that T where T. Higgins would be in fancy drafts if they had invested in uh, Sewell mm -hmm. instead of Jamar Chase. You'd have a, a clearer picture of the passing game. So he connected on just nine of 48 deep targets last year. Although Joe Sewell got <laughs> Sewell kind of got schooled there in the preseason. Sewell school? Yep. Got taken to school. Okay. Uh, 48 pass attempts a game. You're right. He's going to throw it a bunch, but there's some things he has to overcome trevor lawrence uh or as jason calls him justin lawrence mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. coming back Whoa. uh coming in at 17 <laughs> uh he's being drafted as the quarterback 14 so there's a lot of excitement and and we'll see if that's warranted uh, i am the highest of the three of us right now it's still behind adp but i have him at 16 you guys at 21 less optimism um look number one overall pick gonna have a chance to start from week one and lots of, you know, you saw a little glimpse of this in the preseason game, seeing how they're going to utilize LaVisca Chenault. Um, Marvin Jones, that, and that was another takeaway. We, we had moved on from that question. Played but, every down, right? But Marvin Jones, it, we're one, that's just one game, very small sample, but it looks like Marvin Jones is the wide receiver from this team that you're, if you're going to draft any of them late, I would take Marv yeah I mean obviously Chark was not there so right. it, it could be a, the, you know look if Chark's not there Marvin's gonna be the guy but he did look really good had a good connection with Lawrence and and I have no problem um drafting Trevor Lawrence calling your shot on Trevor Lawrence he's a guy that uh, doesn't get enough credit for his wheels his legs he he put up a lot of rushing yards in college I think he'll put up a good amount of rushing yards a, a nice baseline. If he gets 250, 300 rushing yards this year, I will not be surprised. And that'll be a really nice baseline uh, for a rookie. He's got Travis Etienne to jump, dump the ball down to, and, and really LaVisca Chenault, a lot of manufactured uh, yardage on, on the screen game. So I'm fine with that. The problem is you really, like, I'm not so bullish to draft him at his current ADP because he's in the 10th round. He's the quarterback 14th off the board. And usually around that place, there are quarterbacks I have more confidence in this year, but I but I don't blame anyone for – I would much rather take the shot on Trevor Lawrence than grab a, a Matt Ryan type, even though I've got you know Matt Ryan a couple spots ahead because I think the, the probability says that Matt Ryan scores more fantasy points this year than, than Trevor Lawrence. I don't really care about scoring the quarterback 15th amount of points. I want right. someone that can really do something special for my fantasy roster – and maybe Trevor Lawrence can. Justin, I, sorry, Justin Lawrence. Uh, I think that he's the perfect pick uh, for for late round fantasy flyer quarterbacks because you start against Houston, right? That's great. And uh, then you get Denver, Arizona at home. No, it's okay. I, Denver? 
Well, I look, this is a horrible defense. You, you saw this last year. The, the, the Jacksonville defense is that a part of the equation is built in, right? Like they're not, they didn't do enough to recover this near last rank defense. Uh, they're at home against Denver. I'm not, I'm not terrified of that. And then they're at home against Arizona, not terrified. And then they're against Cincinnati. So, and if you see great things in those first four games, right? It's kind of the unknown upside. Maybe you have somebody that, um, like Jason said, he rushes the football a bunch, and Marvin Jones is making an impact, and ETN out of the backfield. Like, I'm with. I, this is the first pick that we've talked about today, where I'm like, okay, I'd take him in, if he slips to the eleventh round. I'd take him and start him and just see what I got because Houston is a nice first week matchup. Agreed. And on then that. if you yeah. want to cut him and go <laughs> pick up Matt Ryan or Kirk Cousins off of waivers, you can do it. Big Ben at 18, Mike. Uh, Jason's actually the highest among us with uh, Roethlisberger at 15 on his rankings. Mike, do you view Big Ben as a great last round, start him, see what you got? You know, you know the weapons are there, Claypool, Johnson, Juju, Najee. We were – Jason and I were just talking about this because I was, you know, giving him friendly grief about him being the quarterback 15 – which I immediately followed up with, I have I have been too low. Like, 22 is not where I expect Ben Roethlisberger to finish if, he, if he's on the field. Because if he's on the field, we're going to see a lot of volume. He was, you know, by the revisionist history, he was terrible last year is what people will say. But he threw the ball over 600 times. He had 3,800 yards. He had 33 passing touchdowns. He's... Uh, he was the, the quarterback 14. He was the quarterback 14. The wide receivers surrounding Ben are – Pittsburgh did it again. They fully replenished and have an incredible trio of of wide receivers to work with. And he, it, maybe Ben's arm is a little bit better this year. It, and Najee is a much better uh, option that they had at the running back position last year. In, 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 that includes in the passing game. So I, I think that Ben here of my ranking of 22 is too low. Now, does that make a difference of am I drafting Ben? That's a little bit difficult opening up the season on the road against Buffalo. That's – at least it's not cold yet, uh, but that's not necessarily how I want my fantasy football season to start. However, Vegas and Cincinnati right after that, weeks two and three, Big Ben is, is interesting. Big Ben is – I, I really love Big Ben this year, and I want to explain the difference for me between he is Kirk Cousins, he is Matt Ryan. I'm down on Matt Ryan, I'm down on Kirk Cousins. The reason is because the only time I really want one of those type of guys is my quarterback two in a super flex league. If I'm drafting multiple quarterbacks, I want a guy like that. I want a guy who's like, yeah, he's probably going to be finished quarterback 14, 15. He's not the guy who's going to win everything for me, but plug in that spot. The difference is Big Ben is the quarterback 27. He is in a super flex league. Yeah, I, he's like one of your last picks, uh, you know, in in a super flex league. So uh, he was quarterback fourteen last year. We all expect Deontay presumably to be better this year than he was last year. Definitely with Claypool, uh, Juju's just doing what he's been doing, and that we haven't even mentioned Eric Ebron could catch touchdowns. Yeah. Pat Fryermuth was a rookie tight end I really liked. So the weapons are there. I don't think he's anything special, um, but. He is so free that in a super flex league, I think he's mispriced. All right. Uh, let's close it out. Ryan Fitzpatrick at 19, Baker Mayfield at 20. And then I have some questions about some other names. But um, Fitzpatrick, uh, Mike is the highest on him. All of us outside the top 12 with Fitzpatrick, obviously, our consensus 19. I'm at 19 on the dot. Jason at 24. Barf. Uh but you don't like that? No, I hate that, man. I love Ryan Fitzpatrick. I, I get it. I think you can look, I think you can love Ryan Fitzpatrick and be reasonable with this offense. I know you love Curtis Samuel. I think it's going to be a little bit of a slower offense. I think you're going to have some weeks where they don't need what what would you call that? Flamboyant Fitzpatrick? I mean, like sure. uh the Winston version of <laughs> Fitzpatrick. Like he's got different quarterbacks in him. I don't know if you knew that. He has a variety of different quarterbacks inside of him, and he turns different ones on at different times. Um, and if he plays 16 games, it'll be the first time in over half a decade. You know, As if he makes the playoffs as well. Well, that'll be the first time ever. 
uh, and he's played for over a decade. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he on a on a per game basis, he's got the weapons. He can uh, run the ball shockingly, um, and I think he's fine for a late round streamer, a second quarterback. I'm I'm happy with him, but the way he plays and the age that he is, I don't see him making a full season. He's the fantasy football quarterback equivalent of driving without a seatbelt. Like your weeks are a little sweatier with Ryan Fitzpatrick. They could end up exhilarating. Mm -hmm. They could end up the best ride of your life. Oh, you're going to get there quicker too. No, I don't need to buckle. I just hop in that car and get there quick. Fractions of a second. Fractions of a second. But, 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 but be careful. Kids be, buckle up. Kids buckle up. Yeah, I don't. I mean, the, the metaphor. <laughs> not sure. I really. It, it all made sense. I don't know if it's more it, exhilarating not to be strapped in. What do you think, Al? <laughs> Is it more exhilarating? Of course. <laughs> um, I'm look. I'm, I'll buckle jump in up here. I'm in on Ryan Fitzpatrick. The, I mean, I I had already brought up the the stats of the of a Turner offense. The Turner offense is you throw it a bunch. It doesn't matter if you have an elite defense which they did last year, and they do this year, they still were one of the most pass-happy teams in the league, and Ryan Fitzpatrick is a better passer than, them, than what they had the last couple of years. So he opens up the season at home against the Chargers and then against the Giants. Those are That's two solid matchups. Maybe, maybe Jason's right, and the Chargers are uh, vastly improved compared to last year, getting some pieces back. But I'd, be, I'd still be happy with that. And then Atlanta in week four. He's got yeah. a good opening schedule to the season if you want to take your shot at some magic. And last year with the, the wide receiver core that Tua got, is getting a, a pass on for last year. You know, like, well, Tua didn't have weapons last year. In seven starts, Ryan Fitzpatrick with those wide receivers was averaging the seventh most fantasy points at the quarterback position, more than Herbert, more than Brady. Like, a good point. Like Fitzpatrick, will, you jerk. <laughs> you know, every once in a while, I get one in, and and with Terry McLaurin, in my opinion, one of the best young wide receivers in the league. I think Ryan Fitzpatrick is set up for some serious fantasy success this year. We have Baker at twenty, Derek Carr's at twenty one, Tua's at twenty two. Um, That's just a rule, though. Yeah, twenty two. Uh, to, yeah, twenty two. Uh, like, don't don't blame us. I Daniel Jones twenty three, Sam Darnold twenty four. I'm not interested in any of the names I just said, except for keeping my eye on Tua. Okay, uh, I know he had an ugly interception to end his preseason game, but he actually looked pretty sharp he to did. me. He did. Um, he has a couple tight ends. He he was leaning on Will Fuller. Will come back. Waddle Parker. And um, a downfield passing game where, look, you you try to nobody expected all of the late round quarterbacks that ended up winning people leagues to do what they did. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been late round quarterbacks. So every one of those guys looks stupid now. Tua may be stupid to pick in in your draft, but like Lawrence, Tua is the only other one where I'm like, well, we don't know what the ceiling is. If you equip him and he, he he's a maturing, you know, like he, it's year two. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I can absolutely get that. Um, he, he looked good uh, at the beginning of the preseason game. And if you want to take your shot on a second year quarterback with, who has a lot of weapons, I'm fine with that. The two names that I would throw out, I think I'm fine with, with Baker. Yeah. I, I think Baker actually has a chance to, to have a decent season. He's got a phenomenal offensive line and a great offense. Yes. They are run first. But at the same time, if oh. Odell Beckham comes through and Jarvis and People Jones and you know Kareem Hunt can can grab the ball, um, I I think that he could end up being okay. And he's drafted obviously much later than some of those safe quarterbacks earlier. And then in a in a super flex league, when you're looking at your third quarterback, I'm still taking a shot on Sam Darnold. He's very very young. He might be equipped for the first time in his career with a with a coach that can get it done and weapons with Christian McCaffrey, Robbie Anderson, Terrence Marshall, uh, DJ Moore. I mean, it, the path, you, you you can see how it would work. Well, you know, obviously nothing in Sam Donald's career would say, I think it's, I think he's going to be great, but you can see the path forward for him to be that super late break breakout guy. If you had to lock one of those two players, Tua or Sam Donald, 
into your lineup from Ooh. week one and keep Ooh. them as your quarterback through the year, who are you doing? I would take Sam Darnold. Oh. All right. Mike, wh- who would you take between the two if you had to lock them in for the year? If I had to lock them in, I would go Tua. What are you doing with Trey Lance and Justin Fields? Um, both players don't project to start the year as the starter for their teams. There's promise. There's excitement. You may have been waiting for us to say their names this entire episode because of that promise. Are you drafting them just in case? One of them. Yeah. Uh, I would be willing to draft Trey Lance just in case. Use your last pick um, in a draft. And if he is the week one starter, uh, I think it's more likely that he could start week one than Justin Fields. Like, Justin Fields has looked good, but they are so committed to Andy Dalton. And, you know, when 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 they drafted uh, Trey Lance, obviously at that point there was not a quarterback competition right? This will be Trey Lance's job. It's just a matter of when. Uh, And I think the reason I'm willing to take the shot on Lance and I'm not on fields is because if you're talking about Lance, I think will have 350 rushing yards on the course of a season. But as a rookie, 350 rushing yards and, uh, you know, a a rookie year of passing is probably not going to be great. Whereas I think Lance could you have mean Fields. You were talking about Justin Fields. Goodness gracious! You, yes, you I was talking about Justin Lance Fields. over and over and over. Yeah, we were trying to figure it out. Thank you, guys. Um, Lance, so, I think, has the chance. Well, to hold have, on, let's go. Up. So Justin Justin Fields, Fields probably only rushes for 350 okay. yards if he starts the season. Has rookie passing and probably won't be enough for me to be super happy in fantasy. Not enough to stash him on my bench when oh. he's probably not even going to play week one. Whereas Lance. His rushing is such a big part of the game that I think he could have, you know, six, seven hundred rushing yards um, and have a Russell Wilson esque rookie season or a Dak Prescott esque rookie season where it's really good for fantasy. I was, I, I couldn't help but see Russell Wilson in in the Justin Fields performance this past week, pocket escaping on the move. Like I was so impressed. He looked really good. Um, it's hard to weed through both of those situations for me because Lance has the highest upside between the two, mm-hmm. period. He's got a better play caller and system and, and all of that. But far, far more weapons around him too. But it's like the like it should it should for any team be easier to move on from Andy Dalton than it is Jimmy Garoppolo. Like we say what we say about him, but his record as a starter is unbelievably good and you know you listen to john lynch in the booth talk about him and you listen to like i just don't really know how they're playing it maybe they're just lying through their teeth but when jimmy's played like when he's been healthy his record is ridiculously good mm-hmm. they got so to they've the won Bowl. so they've won like I, I don't remember what it is brooks i don't know if you can figure that out it's something like you know 20 and 6 Something like that as a starter. So That being said, in the division, you see a lot of similarities with the incredible record of Jared Goff and him getting him to a yeah. Super Bowl. And it's like, yeah, but you're not who we want. Well, see you later. No, I, I, you're right. And, and the thing is, is who's more likely, though, to go on a run of wins? It's probably Jimmy G. It's probably not Andy Dalton in Chicago. Yes, for sure. So, um, But I, I'm with you. I, I that's why they need to make the change before week one. Yeah, be like, could, could that happen? Dang, I don't know. Jimmy G keeps winning. Well, and it's so funny because both, it's like these starters, right? Like if you are Andy Dalton or Jimmy Garoppolo, the person, you you get the respect of being the starter, so you like play three plays and you're out for the game, right? But then you get to watch yeah. your replacement play the half. <laughs> and then like Jimmy G's, he's clapping on the sideline. Andy Dalton that is, was, But the, the, the clapping was actually when the – when his team dropped the passes. <laughs> I mean, right. And and it's like... It's like, well, incompletion. It could put it on the stats. I mean, wouldn't you almost want to be like, no, 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 no. I don't want the starter treatment. I want the rookie treatment. Well, yeah. they said Andy Dalton's going to play more now. Well, yeah, I get why. But it, So back to the question of, are you stashing them at the end of a draft? Yes. A very... 100%. I am... I am Both open of them? To, no, don't. I'm, I'm picking... I'm open to, to both of them, but I'm going to target Trey Lance. And if somebody is listening to the show and they're the wiser and they, they're able to get Lance before me, I'm okay going with Justin Fields because this is right now. Like, we're we're one game in to one week into preseason. There is a, there is a non-zero chance that 
or there is a greater than 0% chance that both of these guys start week one. It's still in the realm of possibilities. And if it, it like if news comes out today, right now, breaking news, Trey Lance is going to start, Justin Fields is going to start. Where are they ranked? Just like shoot from the hip, where – where would you project them in your in your top twenty rankings? Yeah, so Trey Lance would slide if he was starting today. He would slide into probably seven. That's what he would be in my top twelve for Ju sure. But Justin Fields would. Justin Fields would be in the Trevor Lawrence. But he would be range. in your top twenty, right? Yeah, yeah. I I think I agree with both those things. I, I other the only thing I disagree is. They play the Rams week one, so Andy Dalton seeing the Rams. I just oh, yeah. fe feed him. Um, feed him to the wolves. What percentage chance do you give right now that everything the 49ers are saying comes true, which is they're building packages for Trey Lance to play on offense, right? Seems like a weird thing to do. Yes. For a guy that's not going to be your starter, a weird thing to run through practices with. What is the percentage chance that Trey Lance does not start a game for for the 49ers this season. What do you zero think? 0.0%. Zero I'll I'll at least give it 1. 1%. So you guys are not don't see that as a realistic I don't, no. where they play both guys and Jimmy G hasn't finished any season. He he's been as uh, you know, his health has been very unreliable and keep in mind he plays for the 49ers and they Oh, oh man, they drop like flies over there. Of the names today, we'll go all the way through 25. Who's the most likely to end up on your team? I think it's Kirk Cousins to me, but it could be Trevor Lawrence. Like if you're going with these later names, uh, I would say Jalen Hurts is going to end up on a lot of my teams. And then if there's, if I completely punt the uh, the quarterback position, it's Ryan Fitzpatrick for me. Yeah, uh, I would say uh, it's between Jalen Hurts and uh, Taysom Hill. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Who's, I totally forgot we were talking about those guys. Uh, who's probably on my uh, most drafted, and then I I will throw Sam Darnold in there if I'm in a super flex league. I almost always grab him. He, I hope I he hope, doesn't cost anything. I hope he's good just for your sake. I, I don't I don't want to be known as like a. He's too late. Uh, but the thing is, I believe in the system. I believe in the players around him. It's too I don't late, believe man. in it's, Darnold. It's but. been one of the weird. Not I'm, this is not meant as an insult, but it's been one of the stranger hills you've climbed this off season with Sam Darnold. Like I don't know because I know you loved him coming into the NFL, so I don't know if that 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 adoration gets a, a new breath now that the fog of gaze is gone. I think that partially plays in the fact that he spent his entire career with crap. Quarter coordinators. Uh, these guys just rarely work out at this point. I in totally. Career. I know, man. I, <laughs> look, look, this is not. This is a hill I'm climbing up on. This is not a hill I am willing to die on. I am ready to run down that hill and fetch a He's pail of water. Bringing a sled like, with him. Uh, yes, I am. I am climbing this hill, planning to sled down. Trust me. This isn't. <laughs> this is not. Uh, he will not be on Fridays, my guys. I can tell you that right now. But you will. Oh, I will victory lap. Yeah, if he's great. that's <laughs> what I was going right. to say. I'm going up the hill, putting the flag there, and then sledding down. And later, if it works out, say, look at that. Look flag. at that flag. <laughs> look at it in the wind. <laughs> look at that Darnold flag. Oh yeah. I didn't even know they printed I put, those. I put that there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting uh, the show. There's a Calvin Ridley <laughs> signed jersey up there. If you don't know about Pristine Auction. They have hundreds of daily authenticated sports memorabilia auctions, so check them out. And if you use the code BALLERS, they'll give you $10. Ballers for, yeah. Ballers for $10. Ballers for $10. So, uh, so check, use the code BALLERS. Yeah, use it at pristineauction.com. Tight end ranking show tomorrow. Tips and tricks on Wednesday. Mock draft Thursday. My guys Friday. This is the time. Make oh, sure you subscribe. baby. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.